Hello and welcome to the Read to Know podcast, where the goal is to actually remember what you read. On this podcast, we go through a book one chapter at a time, and each week we actually practice remembering what we've read. So we don't just remember, but then we can actually better apply it to our life. If you want to follow along, we're currently working our way through Stephen Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. This week, we're taking a look at Habit 6, which is Synergize, and then next week, we'll take a look at Habit 7, Sharpen the Saw. I'm Zach Brown, and my friend Chris Yarber is joining me to help discuss and break down this book. Also, if you've been listening and following along up to this point, we're super stoked that you're here, and we'd love to hear from you. So please reach out and uh, say hello. We are at Read to Know Pod on all platforms. Uh, also, if you listen on Apple Podcasts, please leave a rating and a review. It would help us a ton. And uh, if you don't have Apple Podcasts, no worries. Just share this with a friend who might be interested. Anyway, thanks again for listening and enjoy the conversation. So, Chris, I know I've told you this before, but I'm going to say it again. I really like that shirt. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love this shirt. I wore it for the first time on Sunday since summer has really begun, even though, as you know, living here in South Georgia, it's hot pretty much all the time. Yes. And uh, I did get some compliments on my shirt, but no one noticed my glasses. I've worn my glasses a couple times. No one has recognized that I wear new glasses. So if you're watching this podcast on YouTube, if you go back to earlier episodes, you'll see they're black frames. And now I have these uh, brown ones, so it even goes well with the shirt. Yeah. Which the brown frames would also go, go, would go well with your black uh, shirt, which you Thank wear you. just about every episode. I love it, though. No, no judgment whatsoever. Yeah, I'm slowly turning into a minimalist, mm-hmm. basically starting with my clothing <laughs> is where I'm starting with that. So, yeah. yeah, just I wish I had more black shirts, honestly. So, but yeah, I do like your your shirt. And Thank for you. those of you who, who can't see, um, it is a Hawaiian shirt. It is. And it the nice thing about it is that, you know, obviously Hawaiian shirts are kind of loud. Yeah. Usually, but it's not too loud. No. Right? This this shirt is just getting right up to the line where it's too much, right. but not crossing it. Right. So that's what I pr- appreciate about it. Yeah, and also um, it's not missing this top button. You know, a lot of Hawaiian shirts, like if you go to Hawaii or to an island, uh, they are oftentimes missing the top button. So it's also not exposing too <laughs> right. much skin. So uh, you're welcome. Right. <laughs> Thank God for that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we are now into habit number six and that means that we are almost done with this book we're almost done we only have two more chapters after this week so we have habit number seven and then we have uh one more chapter uh the conclusion to this book yeah it's been it's been a great book i mean especially for a first one uh for for this new podcast that we're trying out i mean it's it's really been a good a good book um and a solid foundation i think for the principles we want to build on moving forward and i think as we go into some new books in mm-hmm. the future we're going to see these habits played out and spoken differently in other books right right yeah exactly cuz these are just so fundamental to right. human life and uh and yeah these kind of characteristics and ideas and and uh you know, ideologies, Mm -hmm. they're, they're going to be, you know, they're, they're going to be in other, other material that we read and and, and digest and stuff. So yeah, it'll be interesting to kind of see that pop out at you while we read other things, right? you know, as, as probably, um, it's, you know, it's everywhere. Yeah. These, in some form or fashion. Right. These different paradigms and these paradigm shifts and stuff are, are going to be said time and time again, just different, in different ways. And of course, in a different context, depending on the book. So the next book we do is not going to be exactly like yep. this one, may not be in the same exact area, uh, but nevertheless, it's going to be a book. We're going to break it down. It's going to be a good time, and we're yeah. going to learn a lot. Yeah, and so yeah, we're looking at books. We're kind of tossing them ideas back and forth. Yeah. We're we're you know throwing some um, books out there just to think about trying to figure out what would be the next one. So mm-hmm. we also want to know what you think. So if you're listening and you have a book that you think might be a good one to do next on the podcast, please send us an email mm-hmm. at read to know pod at gmail.com. Yeah, read to know pod at gmail.com. Uh, give us some book suggestions. Right. We would love to uh, hear your thoughts and uh, and get more ideas as to what we could possibly do next as far as a book. 
yeah, before we started this podcast, we probably looked at about 10 different books or so. Yeah. You sent a list and I looked at those and looked at three or four others. So the more options that we get from people emailing us, I would think would be even better because then we can look at those, evaluate those and uh, may choose one of those. But we also have some other books on the docket that we're looking at. So maybe we'll be able to announce that in the next couple episodes. Yep. Awesome. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into uh, habit number six, which yes. is synergize. Synergize, yes. Not synergy, synergize. Mm-hmm. Synergy uh, being the word uh, of and really the main focus of this habit. And with every single chapter that he uh, writes in this book, or excuse, excuse me, with every single chapter that speaks specifically to a habit, mm-hmm. he oftentimes starts off with a definition, a general idea, and then breaks it down and gets more specific with it, especially through the stories that he tells. And this chapter is no different. Right. You and I noticed on the surface that this chapter does not have a lot of lists. It's not like these four th- things or this diagram. However, it's 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 a concept that he teaches at the beginning and then he lays it out in different ways through these personal stories and testimonies that he has in the chapter. Um, but he starts off by telling us that synergy... Uh, is really the catalyst uh, out of all of the habits. You know, all the habits we've learned before this really build up to this type of communication. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's interesting he starts off by telling us that synergy is all all around us in nature. And when I first read that, I was thinking to myself, where is he going with this? Mm -hmm. Uh, But he starts off with saying that synergy is around us all in nature. And he talks about how two plants, when they're planted close together, their roots intertwine, and that way they're able to grow better. And that's the kind of communication that synergy brings to the table, that when we uh, first seek to understand others and then we think win-win, the type of communication we can have uh, is this synergy type of communication. And so really, um, this synergy, this habit, uh, its value is found in uh, differences that we have with other people. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes when we uh, communicate with someone and we first find out whether or not we agree or disagree with them based on how the conversation is going, oftentimes if we disagree with them, we try to fight our position forward. And that's when we begin to speak, to be understood, not to listen, to understand. And so when, when we first hear that we disagree with someone, as I said, we, we tend to argue with them a little bit. But then uh, really, if we want to have, if we want to develop this habit of synergy, really when a difference comes uh, up in a conversation, really it's about saying, oh, good, you know, and trying to understand that difference and really talk that out. And so the, the process of this is really growth in the conversation and in the relationship is the point of synergy. And that's how it kind of starts it off. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's definitely, that's definitely true. Um, you know, we were talking about this a little bit earlier and it's kind of this, this habit is a little bit ambiguous in a sense. And it's not very like, um, you know, it takes a little like reading to really like kind of internalize this and understand what he's talking about here. But synergize the name of the habit is actually kind of more like a verb. Right. Yes. It's more of a action. And uh, synergy is the noun. Synergize yes. is the verb. So basically it is still an action that is taking place. Um, but basically it's the culmination, from my understanding, is the culmination mm-hmm. of habits one through yeah. five. Yeah. And that's what becomes when you have habits one through five in place. Mm-hmm. Basically, synergy is the creation of of the outcome of yep. those habits yep. in a sense. And I like the analogy that he used uh, similar to the water, um, or similar to the flowers mm-hmm. uh, and the roots intertwining is that when you put two pieces of wood together, uh, the sum is greater than um, the parts, um, you right. know what I mean? And and that's the definition he gives right. at the beginning, which at first when you read that from the beginning, because it, a, a, it is a little bit, and because, like you mentioned, it's kind of like what what is he talking about? The sum yeah. is greater than the part, or the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. The sum That's of its it. parts. The whole yes. is greater than the sum of its parts. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and that makes sense when I think when you use the wood analogy because I mean like one one piece of wood it, it usually doesn't do you too much good. Right. But then when you have one, uh, when you have two, three, four, five, or more pieces of wood, you can really make something that 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 does something, you right. know what I mean? You can have a, you have a deck, you have a, a boat, you have a, you know, a house, you know, when, when, when you put those things together and they work together, 
and they and they contribute towards a greater goal that's when the synergy happens that's when you synergize right in a sense with other people right and in in groups and dynamics and 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 um you know even on an individual level with other people and he talks about that synergy starts uh with yourself so you can synergize with yourself you know this might be farther on in the chapter but he talks about you know synergizing basically with yourself mm-hmm. and basically that's just the culmination of one two three habits one two three um, and and getting those down, and that's how you have perfect, as he calls it, like left brain, right brain interaction with yourself. You know what I mean? Because yes. you can, you're part one part logical and one part uh, emotional. And if you live from one of those, whichever one, if you live from just one of those, mm-hmm. then you're not really balanced. Right. And but if you but if you take the best of both of them and you're able to intertwine them and work together with yourself in a way that's not. Um, overpowered by one of those or the other, but able to use those effectively together, then that's what he's talking about with, you know, a powerful, um, like personal, interpersonal synergy. Yes. And, and he uses an illustration to kind of get that point across with a husband and a wife. And in mm-hmm. fact, he was at a, a seminar giving some kind of presentation and one of the executives came to him and asked, Hey, you know, I know you're talking about this in a business context, but I'm really getting a, uh, when I'm, when I'm listening to you, I'm really thinking about my marriage a lot. Do you think that you could come and have lunch with my wife and I, and we could talk and you could kind of see how we interact. And what he noticed from that conversation was there wasn't much synergizing or synergy going on. In fact, what he found was that the man, as we oftentimes do, think with just he w- he was thinking and talking out of the left side of his brain, while the woman was speaking, his wife was speaking out of the right side of mm-hmm. her brain. Instead of having that uh, cooperative spirit about them and really uh, and really talking talking things out and using both sides, one was using one and one was using the other, and it was causing a division and disunity uh, and discord right. uh, because of that communication. Right. So. And the, the bulk of synergy, mm-hmm. and when you synergize, the bulk of that comes from communication. Yeah. And he talks a great deal about that in this chapter, how the way we communicate, you know, obviously is, is very important when it comes to cooperating with other people. And, and a proper foundation of habit four and five, you know, obviously gives way to synergy, as we've all come to realize by now that each habit builds on top of the other, you right. know. But it's really clear that, you can't have this kind of synergy and he kind of describes it as like a better the best alternate like third option right Mm -hmm. because when you think about just someone coming in like two people coming in discussing something right and kind of going back to habit four think win-win someone can come with a win-lose mentality someone can come with a lose-win mentality and they could even try for win-win but if they are not completely thinking both of them are on the same page trying to think win-win and then at the same time they're both trying to fully understand the other person before they seek to be understood and they fully communicate back and forth in a way that that is clear and can get you both on the same page you won't have a a synergy kind of level of interaction with that person Mm -hmm. and it comes down to i like this i like this idea is he gave um you know um in a, in, in a story, but the kind of the premise was with a husband, like a husband and wife talking about a situation, trying to figure out what to do. It's not that the husband has one opinion and the wife has another and they're trying to figure out which way to go or they're trying to compromise, but it's that they see both pe- both individuals' um, problems and the solutions that they want so well that they're actually both looking from the same side. And I thought that was very, um, you know, very... Um, uh, powerful to, mm-hmm. to think of it that way is that you basically get on the same side of the problem with that person and you both look from the same side and you're like, okay, this is the problem. And you're looking at it together. Right. Basically it comes from an idea of, uh, looking at the problem together. Um, then, then looking at it individually and you having your own, right. uh, wants and desires, you see the wants and desires of the other person just as much as you see your own. And through that, you can basically, as he says, get to this next level of, of communication, this next level of problem solving and thinking and creative thinking. And usually, he says, um, um, results and and um, 
and final outcomes are usually better than than what the even what you maybe even wanted originally. Right. And doesn't he call you know taking as you said that husband and wife scenario for example taking and getting on the same side first and then creating an outcome doesn't doesn't he call that the third alternative? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was getting at the third I could third alternative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it that's what it was. Um yeah, so it's 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 like I said, it's it feels a little ambiguous, but yeah. I think when you have the culmination of all the other five habits, that it kind of almost flows naturally out of out of that person. And what's interesting is he has a graph, um, some point in the chapter, mm-hmm. and he's talking about the levels of communication, and it's kind of just like a gradual slope um, upwards. Right. And he he talks about the lowest level basically being. Um, like a you know lose lose or or even win lose you know um, type of um, uh, mentality and communication mm-hmm. and that's a low level of trust and then also just like a low level of um, um, you know um, understanding the other person right and the you know the bigger that you um, the higher that you climb on that ladder the higher the more trust you have and the more um, compassion or consideration you have for the other person um, that increases right mm-hmm. you're clo- you get closer to what he calls synergy right and you get to the next step is like um a low form of comprom or a low form of win-win which is compromise right then you get a high form of like win-win mm-hmm. um and then above that is synergy and the, and that's why and he mentions this a couple times in the chapter this is why for synergy to take place the emotional bank account has to be high the trust right. has to be high so this this does take time. Mm-hmm. And he, he talks about this concept in this chapter as if whenever it happens, like it's happening and you can't really, you don't want to really recreate, recreate right. it. You can't mock it every time. Right. It's not going to be the same every time, but you know, when you get in a conversation that there's synergy between the two of you, you know, uh, that it's synergy right. when you kind of see it and experience it. Um, which the, he did not say this in the chapter, but I read this, uh, somewhere else quite a while back ago. Um, um, because synergy is all about, uh, of course, since that m- emotional bank account has to be high, trust has to be high. Um, uh, it I, I read somewhere before that it takes about seven minutes to get into a deep conversation with someone. And, and so, of course, it doesn't just take seven minutes for trust to be built between two people. Of course, it takes more time than that. But w- what I mean by that is, is it just takes time for synergy to be created. Don't just expect to walk in your household and create synergy with your family within the first two minutes. And if you don't, you're a failure. Right. That's not at all. This, this habit, like the others, does take time. Um, but as we've gotten into this public victory realm, we definitely see that these habits and synergy is one of those, one, one of these, um, that as we get into this public victories habits, this is something that we can really start right away. It's not like writing that personal mission statement, which may take, you know, a couple of months. Right. This is something that we can practice and really look for the opportunity in order for this to happen right away. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's very interesting, I think, um, how also this, when you get to this point, he mentions at some point how it basically, this is kind of the, the blueprint for shifting culture. Yeah. Even, which I thought was very interesting. He has kind of like a section on this. And and he basically asks a question, you want to know how you, how you uh, affect change a culture in a business or an organization mm-hmm. or in a group? Mm-hmm. Um, this is basically it, right? And it's, and it's, getting on everyone on the same level you know it's getting everyone on the same communication level it's giving getting everyone on the same trust level Mm -hmm. it's getting everyone on the same um you know page letting them be able to express their uh, thoughts feelings desires um and actually being able to fully again articulate and understand that and repeat it back to them with the same amount of context and emotion right um and Getting to that point of synergy within an organization or a group, that's where you can really affect culture and actually change it. Right. Um, and he was talking about if it's, you know, a family dynamic that's not good that, you know, you want to change. Um, like you said, you can't just run in there, change it, bam, like changed. Right. You have to you have to work at it. But, you, but getting to this point, going through these steps, working on these habits, that's what leads to actually changing the culture in an organization or in a family or any kind of dynamic. Right. And he, this is kind of going back towards the beginning of the chapter, but I'm glad that you mentioned that. Um, but 
he this is um, towards the beginning, like I said, but he uh, mentions how uh, he has an organizational example and then he has a classroom example as well, which is one place you don't think that you could really make effective change is in a classroom. But he he says that towards the beginning that he was in a classroom um, at the university that he was teaching at. Mm -hmm. And he said that as as um, they were teaching and he was getting into some of the lectures and they had gotten a couple weeks into the classroom again and didn't just start off right away, um, that there was this one student who really began to open up. And that's where this whole process really starts is by right. opening up with that trust being high, as we said. And what that did was that changed, much like it can change an organization's mission, even mission statement or purpose, or maybe your driving point, um, just as cultures could be changed by this principle, uh, so can organizations and their mission and their purpose. Um, this classroom really, is, as that student began to open up, so many others did, and really it took it away from the usual lecture, student answer. Right. Professor talks more kind of classroom setup to a really more dynamic right. uh, classroom um, because again they were open open uh, synergy uh, they were synergizing um, that synergy was there in that communication yeah. and and that changed it for them the professor he, him he didn't need to be convinced that it needed that that needed to take place and that that change needed to happen. It just did. Yeah. And he uses uh, a very similar illustration with his business um, that him and some of his uh, uh, business partners went on a retreat. Some of the people that worked for him and went on a retreat and they were rewriting their mission statement and it was only after a time of synergizing with one another mm -hmm. that they came up with a new mission statement yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah. it certainly can it affect uh, cultures and also businesses right. in, in every area of our life as well, as you mentioned. Right. And I think that's what he mentions that when you get to that point, you're basically, at, you guys are all at a next level of thinking and communicating and really getting to the heart of matter. He said it's, you know, I mean, this is kind of actually in my own words, but it's kind of like lightning in a bottle, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, is kind of what synergy is. Although he says also that you can't save it and use it again some other time, you know what I mean? Like it has to, it's basically something that that is is that for that situation. And you're like, you can't try and be like, oh, these are the steps to recreate it again. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't take the same, you're like, well, we did this and this was what happened and now we got to this point. So we're just gonna try and do that exact again and try and create this kind of momentum. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It doesn't work like that. It's, it's more personal, it's more interpersonal um, in a sense. Um, but it is kind of like, uh, you know, for lack of a better, better word, like kind of almost like a, uh, you feel it in the air. It's kind of like a, like a, like a magical kind of, you know, thing. Like right. it's, it's, it's like, there's a certain kind of feeling in the air basically is what he's getting at. I think in that, you know, if you're in a, in a, you know, uh, a synergized atmosphere mm -hmm. in a sense. And, um, and he says a lot of people actually don't, don't really get to this point. Um, you know, much, at all yeah that's, that's what i was just about to it's mention it's not often that people actually get to this point con or at least get to this uh consistently yeah that's that's uh what i was going to say i was going to say that the reason why you, it's really hard to identify and really difficult to talk with words and i think that's why he doesn't have steps to get there yeah he just gives us um some illustrations right. and some guidance um, and if you have the habits in place, you're going to be better off than most people in trying to get there. Right, right. And, but the reason why we he can't really say uh, for definite this is it and this is not is because a lot of people don't get there. Right. Um, in in our conversations, but as you said, when right. we when we set ourselves up with the previous habits to get there, then yeah. it's much yeah. more likely of a chance for that to happen. Yeah. Now I just thought of this, and I'm uh -huh. and I'm curious. We haven't talked about this before, yeah. but. Is there a time that you think specifically that you're like, I'm pretty sure like this was kind of this was some kind of synergy next level um, stuff happening for you personally in some kind of interaction with a person or a group or. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a good question. Off I think the top, a couple of, of times. Yeah, head. off the top of my head, I can off the top of my head, I can think of two moments. One was with um, the girl who's now my wife, uh, but she wasn't we were dating at the time. Um, and then the other time, uh, was with a friend, uh, in college, we were roommates, um, and still good friends, uh, today, but really, and really those started off, uh, by, uh, me being open with one, um, and, um, 
uh, the other person being open, and that's that's how it started. Right. Was opening up and, and not and not taking the time really during those conversations to try to necessarily, if this makes sense, understand every little detail, but yep. really to see where that person was coming from because we did come from different past and experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and mostly what we were talking about was, uh, struggles, uh, that we had been dealing with, uh, either most of our life or just kind of recently. Um, and so it's, it's during those, those couple times that I can think of where I really de delve deep with people, uh, very, very similar to what he said in the book. We weren't, um, negating each other for our differences, but in fact, we were very open and we were able to right. understand, right. uh, one another. Um, and we, uh, celebrated the fact that we also took that time um, and were, were as open as we were right. uh, because you know that's that's a scary thing to do sometimes right yeah. um, so I can think of a, I can think of a couple yeah a couple I think I think just about just about two maybe maybe three times in my whole entire life maybe we've gotten there but what what about you you have any yeah I mean I think there's think probably been a, a couple times mostly I think it's with maybe uh, one other individual or yeah. like two others. Uh, a it's very usually small a very group small people. group. Yeah. Um, I think there's definitely probably been a few a few moments. I think there's probably been some other times where uh, it maybe it, that that was the case, but I was maybe not aware of it to really see it for what it was. I just was like, oh hey, this is cool, or right. you know, you know what I mean. I think I probably wasn't fully aware. If I was fully aware, I feel like I'd probably know. Um, but I feel like there were some other times. But I think, I, I it's definitely it's definitely something I experienced, but not as often as probably, um, you know, probably as often as it should be. Or Stephen Covey would suggest that it it would be beneficial to right. be. You know what I mean? Not that he has a number of times right. that you right. should in in your life. He really doesn't give any guidance in that area. Towards towards the end of this chapter, he and this does, is why yeah, not yeah, to cut yeah. you off, but I think this is why it's a habit. Is that it's he wants to turn it from something that maybe for all of us is some a rare occurrence, right? And turn it into a a consistent occurrence, right. right? Well, how much stronger would our relationships be if this was a consistent thing? If this yeah. wasn't just a once in a lifetime opportunity, right. but this was a consistent thing, that yeah. would be so miraculous for yeah. our relationships. It would be incredible. Yeah, it would and look I think like, that's what he's getting at. Yeah, through through this, through making it a habit. Right. Right. Yeah. The problem with this, though, is <laughs> towards the end of the chapter, he talks about he has a, another diagram where he has some arrows pushing down and some arrows pushing up. And there are things uh, in our life naturally that kind of keep us away from these types of conversations. Yeah. Um, and there are some things that also can help us in that conversation as well. I'll have to, I'll have to crack open the book when we get into the second half of this podcast, I'll have to crack open the book to look at some of those quotes surrounding that. Uh, but there are things in our life that definitely press that down and subdue that and don't allow those conversations to come up to the surface maybe right. as much as they should. Right. Yeah. And it's basically the same. This is when he, I think when he's talking about, um, switching the culture, culture, influencing mm -hmm. the culture mm -hmm. of an organization or, or group. Um, but any positive, you know, action. There's also an equally negative reaction. You know, yes. and that's what he's kind of getting at with this. With this, there's this push pull right. with um with with this with this synergy idea, right? You know what I mean. And that's what he's getting at with changing culture. You may hit, you may push with, um, you know, these positive actions or, or habits, um, but you're gonna get a negative reaction in some form or fashion, basically. And um, and it's a matter of you kind of he said just kind of sticking in and grounding yourself in the in the habits to then counteract those negative effects. You know what I mean? Fully in in this case, thinking win win with the other person, the other group, the group, um, and 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 seeking to understand first. You know, those things lead to counteracting the the negative uh, things that pop up from that. Right. But um, I think it's before that. But I want to talk about. What I think is the 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 section that struck me the most yeah, in this whole ahead. chapter, which was uh, valuing the differences. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of good you know lines and quotes that I think I'll probably uh, reference um, here in a little bit from this section. But um, I think this was the most kind of like powerful section um, for me because basically when it comes down to it, synergy is about seeing other people's differences and. And not just accepting them, but fully understanding them. Right. 
and then still accepting them. You know what I mean? And and I think that's a powerful thing. That's again so hard to do. Like right. it's not it's not in any of our any of our natures. Right. You know what I mean? Like and and I was just thinking, you know, especially kind of a lot now with everything going on in the world right now. Imagine if we came and we and we looked at each other and we looked at other people's differences and said, as as Stephen Covey says in the book, he says. If someone has something, uh, a difference of opinion or ideas or anything like that, I say, good, awesome. Let me hear your ideas. I want to know what differences you have. Right. Wow. Would you, could you imagine if we all, if we all spoke and thought, you know, thought that, you know, spoke that to one another and that's how we truly felt. Right. And we saw someone with a difference of opinion than us and we looked at them and we're like, that's awesome that you have a different opinion. Tell me more about that. Right. And, and notice how that's different than... I absolutely agree with you yeah. that you and I are on the same page. But really, it's, it's in my opinion, more mature than that right. to say, I don't agree with you, but I hear what you're saying. I think that's good. Tell me more about that so that maybe I can understand. Yeah. Not understand to agree, but understand yeah. to understand. Yeah. And he says, and really, it's not even about understanding so that then you can better prove that you're right. <laughs> no, that's you not the point I mean? at all. And because he says, because he says, really, the difference of opinion is that People have difference of opinion, opinion, not because that, not because that, um, that that you're objectively right and you see the world for how it is, and the other person doesn't see the world for how it is. Is that we all have our, we all each have our own lens through which we see and interpret the world. Right. So, and, we, he's, and he, he gives this exa- example in the first chapter, right? Yeah. Where there's a picture of a lady. Some people will think that that's an old woman, and mm-hmm. other people will think it's a young woman. And the thing is, you're both right, though. You're both when right. When you look at that, you're both right. And so we don't actually see the no one, absolutely no one, sees the world for what it is. Yeah. We see the world for has how we, we see how it. we see it, how we perceive it, um, and that's why you have so many people again, even today, very heavily today, disagreeing with one another yeah. and constantly trying to prove why they're right and you're wrong. Yeah. And if you don't, and if you don't agree, then there's no space for you. Right. And and that's a crazy thing, uh, you know. And and just think about just think about how much better we could relate to each other and function as a as a country as a society if we looked at someone with a difference of opinion and said that's that's awesome tell me more because be, and not because you're trying to prove something, but it's because you genuinely uh, you realize that their way of looking at the world and your way of looking at the world are both equally correct. Right. And, 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 and that you can, you can learn something from someone else's point of view and it may broaden your own. Right. And someone else may not, uh, understand or know this, this habit or really look at the world that way that we should approach other people and say, Oh, that difference is good. I want to learn. I want to learn more about that. Tell me more about that. They may not come into a conversation with that mindset, but I bet their mind would be more open to that if you initiate that and then I, I'm sure yeah. in return they they may more openly go well what 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 do you think about this or what's yep. what's kind of your view yep. on this and they may be more willing to hear after you've opened up exactly and that's seeking first to understand yep. then to be understood uh, right there and he gives examples of that people who were yeah. about to sue each other in court <laughs> and they, yeah. and they yeah. sat on the side and they were like look what if we came to what if we were able to fully understand each other and came to a conclusion right. and and through talking and through realizing how the other person uh, really understanding the other person's issues and problems and what they were and what how they saw things mm-hmm. that really gave way and it literally in, in some situations some stories that he said it brought people out of they were about to sue each other and they yeah. and and they resolved the whole thing Without going to court, right? Not that you know, and he says this. He says not that going to court is never, ever, you know, not necessary. Yeah. If I can use a double negative there, <laughs> that it's that it's never not necessary. Um, but how much of our arguments and dispositions with each other could be right. settled just right. by you know uh, creating this uh, synergy and by yeah. seeking to understand. Yeah. yeah. It would be life changing. It sure. would be. And, and I think that's just huge value valuing, you know, and not just, not just kind of wanting to understand, but valuing the other person's differences. Right. Yeah. You're right. That was a very powerful section. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, that was the biggest thing that I took away from this, from this chapter as a whole. I thought that was a very, uh, powerful, um, you know, thought and idea, and uh, if we all take it to heart, I mean, just just imagine what 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 could be done. Oh man, you know what I mean? How how much better we could all get along and and uh, and move forward. Right. 
right. and create, as he says, like a next level third alternative right. to the to the situation. Right. With you bringing up that section, which I agree, I think that's probably the most important section in this book. Although it's not the end of the chapter, I'm ready and excited to get into this book if you want to break out some specific quotes. Yeah, I think we covered that pretty well. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive in. So we have our books open to look at some specific quotes as we dive through the rest of this chapter, some of which we've reviewed already, yes, and gone into de- detail with. But what we haven't and some quotes that we want to mention, we'll go over. And I wanted to start us off by looking at the second paragraph. The first sentence summarizes this whole habit here. He says, when properly understood, synergy is the highest activity in all life. The true test and manifestation of all other habits put together. Yeah. Yeah. And he continues uh, saying it synergy simply defined means that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And we kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, right. but I think that's a good way to put it. It means that the relationship which the parts have to each other is a part in and of itself. It is not the only part, but the most catalytic, the most empowering, the most unifying and the most exciting part. Um, you know, which is just interesting. Again, it goes to that is goes to that um, analogy that he used. If you put two pieces of wood together, they still hold much more than the total weight held by each separately. Right. Uh, one plus one, he says here, equals three or more, or you know, or any number. You know, right. one plus one actually gives way to more than just two. Right. Um, and you mentioned this as we talked about what we believe to be the most important section. So this kind of touches on this. Um, but before he leaves the definition behind and gets into the communication section of this chapter, he states um, that the essence of synergy is to yeah. value differences. Yeah. He says to respect them, to build on strengths, and to compensate for weaknesses is really why this is all so important and how it can effectively change. As you mentioned at the beginning, this is that's how it can change cultures, businesses, families. Right, right, right. Dynamics. And he says, we obviously value physical differences, right? right? Height, you know, uh, strength, you know, those type of things. He's like, but what about the social, mental, and emotional differences? Could these differences not also be sources of creating new, exciting forms of life, creating an environment that is truly fulfilling for each person, that nurtures self-esteem and self-worth, of each that creates opportunities for each to mature into uh, independence and then gradually into interdependence. And I think that's a great way to pull it, uh, put it because synergy is not just about, as we've talked about, I think a lot, but it's not just about conflict resolution. No, you know what I mean? It's not just about compromising or trying to come to a, 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 a mutual agreement, but it's just genuinely, honestly, like, saying like we're all different in the way we see the world we think we act we behave and and not all that is bad all that's really good you know what i mean like we're all different and we can value those things and uh and we can come together to create something more than if there was just you know it's kind of like the same idea with the enneagram i've heard people say you know if if you're familiar with the enneagram it's just a personality kind of um test and you can be either uh um, any number from one through nine you know, uh, you know, uh, me being a one, I think, you know, it would be it would be awesome if everybody else was a one as well, because then, you know, uh, I'm the perfectionist. They would all everything would be done right. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't have to worry about other people, you know, not pulling their weight or whatever. You know what I mean? Or me seeing everything wrong, like everyone would be done right. But it would be a boring world. You know what right. I mean? Because there's not those other personalities that kind of give life and and, and bring different color and 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 imagination to to a scene or situation. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it, 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 it sounds nice if we were all the same. Right. But it really would just be boring. No, yeah. And if we were all the same, there wouldn't be no need yeah. for this habit anyway because um, there would be no differences. Yeah. But this, and it's just, you know, coming to terms with that and appreciating it, really. Right, right. That's, that's the most important. That's why he says it's the essence of this habit. It's the most important part of this habit. But as you mentioned before... Very in, in the first half, and I'm, I'm glad that you did, but he just says it here under this uh, uh, synergistic communication section. Uh, he says that the problem is not many people have really experienced even a moderate degree of synergy, whether it's within their yeah. family life or in other interactions, he states there. So that's 
that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, uh, you know, he also says it's just opening your mind and your heart to other solutions and other ideas, possibilities, you know, Hey, you, you may have thought that like, you may have thought that this could be a reality and, and maybe this could be a reality, mm -hmm. but there's something else that, that may be even better that we haven't even figured it, thought of mm -hmm. yet. You know what I mean? And it's kind of, it's just, it's, it's really, th it's like a thinking outside the box as well. You right. know what I mean? Just kind of like there could be, if we work together, we can, we can create something that no one ever thought of. Right. Right. Basically. Right. Um, to continue um, along this disagreeing uh, section, uh, the importance of this is we've been talking in, in this section later in the chapter under synergy and communication. There's a part where he says um, that uh, the attitude was, if a person of your intelligence and competence and commitment disagrees with me, then there must be something to your disagreement that I don't understand, and I need to understand it. You have a perspective, a frame of reference I need to look at, and that's that's the state of mind that our that we need to approach our conversations with in order to create synergy, to have more of these uh, synergized conversations. That's the kind of mindset we have to come into our conversations communicating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and kind of touching on this, we touched on this a little mm -hmm. bit um, in the in the first part, but I want to talk about again that that kind of graph, that box that I was talking about, where he goes over the levels of communication, and so. The at level communication is actually kind of like a graph and one side is trust and one side is cooperation. And so you have a line that is going diagonally upwards, upwards to higher trust and higher cooperation. And at the very low side of both of those is the defensive, um, uh, the lowest level of communication, which he calls the defensive communication, which is win, lose or lose, win or lose, lose. And that's a low level of trust and a low level of cooperation. Right. And as you move up higher, there's uh, a respectful compromise communication, which is more trust and more cooperation. But it's kind of in the middle and it's not really again compromise. He says is a low form of win win. Yeah. And, and what what's amazing about this that he brings out this principle of uh, of, of synergy uh, is respectful compromise is really all you hear about yeah. from other people, from other communicators, from psychologists, as I've right. spent time reading, particularly concerning marriage and friendships and right. stuff. That seems to be what it's all about is compromise. But if there's a higher degree of trust and cooperation that you can have in a relationship other than compromise, why isn't this talked about more? Right, right. I just, yeah. I just don't understand. So I was so intrigued to see that, that, that that's just more of a respectful kind of thing. But that's not the highest degree that we right, have can right. have with uh, in our relationships yeah I actually hadn't thought about that until you mentioned it just now but yeah in a lot of books or things that you read or tips or you know about uh, conflict you know especially in marriage as right. you as as you know um, yeah most of the time they're like the the goal is compromise right. like that's the goal that's the end goal like and that's doesn't have to be the goal there is this win-win yeah. coming to the other person's yeah. side and truly yeah. understanding and not just win-win as he says there's basically what he talks about um he talks about the 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 middle being obviously the respectful communication and then there's there's win-win but then even kind of just if if win-win is like the top level yeah. there's just a little mini step right above that which is which is synergy right, right. which is synergistic communication basically is what he's saying is that right. it's right on top of win-win because compromise is a low form of win-win yeah the high form of win-win the upside of that is the is the synergistic communication as he talks about right and it, it basically the difference between those two the compromise and the synergy and the and the high form of win-win is that the those those people in the in those situations those conversations aren't aren't deeply looking at the paradigms and assumptions underlying their own positions and become open to new possibilities, um, and he says here again, uh, synergy means that one plus one may equal eight sixteen or even sixteen hundred. And uh, the synergistic position, which is of high trust, produces solutions better than any originally proposed. So the ideas that you came before the conversation started and the ideas the other person came with before the conversation started, those aren't even the best, those aren't even the best solutions. And you've figured out new solutions through this syner uh, uh, synergistic communication mm -hmm. is, what he's, is what he's saying here. And uh, what I like here is that he says this produces solutions better than any originally proposed and all parties know it. You know it. Right. I know it. We all know that we came up with a better solution than what we had come to with before. Right. 
Yeah, uh, I, you mentioned this earlier, but I love how he kind of gives this to kind of open our brains up to what this looks like. Uh, he gives some math equations for the difference between compromise, this difference between compromise and then synergy. And he, he says that compromise compromise means that one plus one really equals one and a half. That both kind of get some out of it, but that's not that's not one plus one equals two. That's one plus one equals one and a half. Right. So as you yeah. said, and as he says, it is a low form of win win. You both kind of give and you both kind of take. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um he also says that the communication isn't defensive, and that's great. Um, it's not protective or angry or manipulative, which would be a great place for some people to be in their relationships because a lot of our conversations can be like that. It's onion and genuine. But when we get to that synergy level, uh, it means that that one plus one may equal eight, 16, or even <laughs> 1,600, right. which is kind of an exaggeration. Um, but it's a it's a high trust right. um, that produces solutions better right. than any originally proposed idea like you right. mentioned. And as for like a formula to get yeah. to synergistic communication, right. he doesn't really give one. No. But he says if you have these things in, in, in place, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be more... Uh, uh, present, you know what I mean. You're going right. to be able to get to it. Is when you know you have a high emotional bank account. You uh, have trust and open communication. You think win-win. You listen uh, uh, empathically, and you yep. seek first to understand. Having all those in combination together is what gives way to synergy. And right. again, he doesn't make it like here's the steps. No, but it's it's you got to have all these ingredients in play, right? Basically, and he says the combination of those ingredients. High emotional bank account, thinking win-win, seeking first to understand. That's what creates an ideal environment for synergy. Right. It's not the steps, but that's what creates the environment for synergy. Right. I think that's a key distinction kind of to make. Yeah, he does. And then he he says, really, this is the product of synergy is instead of just transaction in a relationship, you get transformation, which is something we've heard yeah. before in an earlier chapter. Um, and so you both get what you really want. And it, and also, this is the key. It builds the relationship in the process. Compromise, as I've seen it when I've done, uh, when I've received uh, premarital counseling, when I've done premarital counseling or marriage counseling or, or the books that I've read on that, um, and also in leadership as well, because leadership, they talk about compromise in a business setting all the time, too. You're not building the relationship in the process. Yeah. You're not really – you're not taking away, but you're also not necessarily building anything in the process. So if you can have a win-win and build a relationship in the process, that's a win-win-win right there, baby. That's what that is. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. That's what that is. Yeah. Um, and, anyway. Yeah. But that's the goal. That's the goal that he's yeah. – that he's that he's shooting for and he's and he's uh you know um, inviting us to shoot for as well yeah um so now to pivot here he pivots and uh we actually didn't touch on this in the first part but now to pivot he goes on to talking about negative synergy which is exactly what it sounds like you know um basically uh you know how people look at at the at the negative side of of this you know kind of communication um you know, and he's just kind of really think like sit and think about like how much negative energy is spent communicating, you know, to other people. Either as he says here, um, you know, how much time is spent confessing other people's sins, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, in, or rivalries, interpersonal conflict, protecting one's uh, backside, masterminding, and second guessing. Like you know what I mean? All negative and 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 non productive uh, ways of communication and and talking and really just kind of energy spent in places that it's not even worth spending time and energy on. Right. And he says, it's like trying to drive down the road with one foot on the gas and the other foot on the brake. Mm -hmm. And instead of pulling a foot off the brake, usually we try and press more gas. Uh, You know, we we press down more on the gas. Um, We try to apply more pressure, more eloquence, more logical information to strengthen our, you know, our own position in Mm -hmm. communication. Right. Um, And, uh, you know, he just says that that's that's you know obviously very negative. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we we need to come from a good place, and that's and that's why habits one, two, and three are so powerful in in this habit specifically. Is that like we talked about earlier? Is that there's the interpersonal interpersonal uh, synergy, that synergy with yourself from within, and that's why you know habit one, for example, being proactive is so integral into this habit, even specifically, just because. With habit one, I think firmly in place, you're going to avoid um, a lot of negative communication that doesn't do really any good. Right. And he, he says 
you know, the thing about all of this is they don't realize in doing this in creating this negative synergy, they don't realize that the very strength of the relationship is having another point of view Mm -hmm. uh, is what he continues to say in this chapter. And you didn't, we didn't mention this section in other words, give the title of this section, but you did mention from this section in the first part, um, that he has come to believe that the key to interpersonal synergy is interpersonal, uh, to interpersonal, yeah, synergy is intrapersonal synergy. That is synergy within ourselves. You did mention that in the first part, so it comes from this negative synergy section, uh, but we didn't label the title as a whole in the first section. But yeah. either way, a good a good section to yeah. this chapter. So he ends that section with a you know story between a husband and wife talking, as you yeah. mentioned, I think, in the first section. Mm-hmm. And so he moves on then into where, again, where we talked about the one, the one section that hit home the most for me, which yeah. is valuing the differences. And so he says here, valuing the differences is the essence of synergy. The mental, the emotional, the psychological differences between people. And the key to valuing those differences is to realize that all people see the world not as it is, but as they are. And, uh, you know, he says, if I think I see the world as it is, why would I even want to value differences? You know what I mean? And right. that makes sense. If And it comes, so it really starts with realizing that you have a, a, a twisted way of seeing the world in a sense, you know what I mean? Not twisted as in, you know, terrible, but just you see it in your own way and you see it in a way that no one else sees it. And your way isn't necessarily the right way, but it's not, it's not the wrong way. Um, but it's, you know, everyone has their own set of glasses on when it comes to looking at the world, basically. Um, And so, you know, realizing that is the first step in valuing other people's uh, ideas and differences. Because if you realize you're not right, then those people aren't necessarily wrong either. And you can value those, you can value those differences. Right. Um, And he takes this as far to say that if two people have the same opinion, he says that one is unnecessary. What's really yeah. the point in talking about it? He said, what's the point to communicate with someone else who sees only the same old woman also? Like if someone, someone sees the way you do, he says, I, I don't want to talk to communicate with someone who agrees with me. Not Now, that's not he's not meaning that in a rude way, like I don't want to. But he, he says, really what I want to do is communicate because you see it differently. Right. And that he values that difference. Right. And he says, is it logical that two people can disagree and that both can be right? He says it's not logical, it's psychological. Yeah. And uh, it's very real. You see, you know, like he says, uh, going back to the first chapter, you see the young lady, I see the old uh, woman. And uh, we're both looking at the same picture and both of us are right. But we interpret them differently. Did you see the old woman in Um, that chapter? Do you remember? I saw the old woman. Yeah, I think I saw the old woman too. Well, then we don't have to talk about it. Yeah, let's not talk about it. Yeah, as he says, (laughs) you know, as he says here, you know, um, which I underline this one, you know, so when I become aware of the difference in our perceptions, I say, Uh good, you see it differently. Help me see the way that you see. If two people have the same opinion, one is unnecessary. So one of us are unnecessary here, basically. (laughs) It's probably me. (laughs) No, you're the most necessary. Thank you. You're necessary. That shirt is necessary. It is necessary. It makes me smile. That shirt is necessary. (laughs) Having the shirt on is also necessary. Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I mean, the difference in our perception, you know, like, again, I just find it crazy. What if what if someone says, you know, what if someone the next time someone came up to me and was like, hey, I disagree with you. And I was like, awesome. Like, let me let me let me hear. I want to know what you know. Let me hear your difference. I can't wait to hear you say that, because that is challenging to do just about every right. Just about every single day I enter into a conversation with someone. And oftentimes I can be blatantly disagreeing with them and just kind of nodding my head yes and not really get into a discussion right. with them. And so those are moments in which I right. miss the chance to have this, uh, you know, this synergized conversation Yeah, is when I just kind of nod and don't really ask them any questions or seek to understand. I just let them say their piece and then leave. Right. That's a, actually, that's a really interesting point. And he doesn't talk about it. I think much here, but that's actually a, a really interesting point. I think how many times do we, how many times do we talk with people and they may disagree with us, but we don't, we're just like, mm-hmm, yeah, okay. And, and, and we're kind of doing it out of politeness that we don't want to get into some kind of heated debate or right. whatever. And we, but we also 
don't want to learn about what they have to say because we don't care because we because we we believe we're right we just don't think it's worth it to pick a fight right you know what i mean like how many times do we do that that we that we are talking to someone that has a difference in opinion than us but we we don't care right. so we just so we just don't even try and 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 learn or or grasp anything right and we just and we just you know zone out and like all right da, 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 this person doesn't agree i don't care yeah let's move on yeah. How many times does that happen? I don't know. He does probably, a lot, a, probably lot. a lot. Probably a lot. Probably <laughs> a and, lot. And like you said, he doesn't he doesn't mention it. But I wonder if that could be one of these restraining forces. This was one of my favorite sections here. This force field mm-hmm. analyst here, and and down at the bottom, I have a graph of restraining forces and driving forces. That there are restraining forces against entering into these yes. center. Uh, jized conversations right real um, quick real quick though I actually have one more quote from this section oh, do you love that section I, this is the best section I'm, <laughs> I'm serious um, I you know I wrote here that this has twofold benefits valuing the differences the benefits are twofold uh-huh. uh, because he says here by by doing that by valuing the differences uh, you not only increase your own awareness uh, but you also affirm that other person so one you get something you get a, a greater awareness Second, you affirm that other person. Um, you give them, as he says, again, calling back to the last chapter, you give them psychological air. You take your foot off the brake and release the negative energy you may have invested in defending a particular position, and then you create an environment for synergy. So, I, really powerful stuff. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that section by far is probably the, mo- is, is the most powerful in this section, the most... Uh, difficult to wrestle with and really gives you an insight into synergy right uh, unlike anything else but these the, some of these other sections do kind of help put some walls around to define this a little bit more and I, and I do like this as we near the end of this chapter I do like these restraining forces and driving forces he has here because again it just implements what kind of attitude perspective and thoughts should you have to create these synergized conversations and some of the restraining forces are, you know, negativity, uh, emotion, uh, lack of logic. Um, and then driving forces is some of the opposites where it's positivity, it's reason, it's logic. Um, and so we see that some of these forces drive these conversations down, uh, and some of these drive them up, uh, to create more opportunity for them to happen. So, I thought right. that was cool how he right. labeled yeah. it like and that. And this is the section where he talks about how to change culture. Yeah. And that's what these, talking about these driving forces, you have the the driving, um, uh, you know, the uh, the driving forces of the positivity, the synergy that you may be trying to push, and then the restraining forces of the, the negative reaction to, to that, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, very interesting. So, moving on here, yeah, you have something? No, yeah, I was just going to mention that the last section – um, here yeah. as we get towards the end. I thought it was interesting. The very last thing that he throws up there is the six paradigms of human interaction uh, again. But before we get to that, uh, I just I wanted to mention this quick quote where he says that synergy works. This is the beginning of the beginning of the yeah. this, uh, sentence. Synergy works. It's a correct principle, he says, uh, and it's the crowning achievement of all the previous habits. Yeah, I underlined that one too. Yeah, yeah I love how he put that. Um, it is effectiveness and in an interdependent re- uh, reality. It is teamwork. It is team building. You know, it says the development of unity and creativity with other human beings. This right. is what's possible yeah. when synergy is created. Unity and creativity with other human beings. Yeah. And it's the culmination of all, a, all these habits up to this point. Right. Yeah. And it's also most of it. Synergy is mostly in our circle of influence, as yes. he also mentions. And that's, um, that's also, especially the uh, intrapersonal synergy uh, yeah. for yourself. That's all. All of that is in your personal, in, is in your circle of influence. But even most rest, the, you know, most other cases of synergy also in your circle of influence. Right. Yeah. So wrapping up, I think um, this chapter here, we he ends it with uh, when you see only two alternatives, yours and the wrong one. And again, how many times do we do that? All, all <laughs> yeah, the yours, time. Yeah, you're the I mean? wrong one. It's yeah. either mine or you're wrong. Man, all all the time. <laughs> it happens so much all the it's happened so much that I don't want to admit no, how much oh, it no, happens. No, 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 no. I mean? no, not at all. Absolutely not. So, uh, Let's not even go there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You can look for uh, you know, when instead of that, 
you can look for a synergistic third alternative. There's almost always a third alternative. And if you work with a win-win philosophy and really seek to understand, you can usually find a solution that would be better for mm. everyone concerned. Yeah. And that's synergy. Again, it builds the relationship. It's not only, it's not just compromise yeah. where it's just this kind of one and a half thing. It's not giving nothing in. Nothing really moves forward, right. You both, you both, uh, find, are on the same side, and that's what enables you to build a relationship and create synergy, uh, which is why it is the catalyst of all these other habits put together, one right. through five. Right. Yep. Well, we did it. We did it. Habit six. We have now conquered public victory. Yep. And we have made it past interdependence. Yes. And we only have one habit left. Yep, which is entitled Sharpen the Saw. Sharpen habit the Saw. Habit seven. Sharpen the saw. So it's going to be interesting to see what he means by that. Yep. Looking forward to that. We have that one. And then we have one more chapter. And then and that's inside it. Inside out again. One more yeah. chapter. And I just want to remind those listening, if you have a suggestion for a book, you can email us at readtoknowpodpod at gmail.com. Uh, and we'd love to hear your suggestions so we know which book we're going to read and dive into next to try to remember. Yep. I'll see you next week. <laughs> see you next week, man.